How's it going guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at the Q80 from Samsung. So there are quite a few different things with this one in particular and this is definitely going to be a fun one to make because I think it's a big step up from the last video we reviewed which was the Q60. If you haven't already go check that out. Link is in the description. Now this particular model does come in a variety of sizes. You have 50 inch, 55 inch, 65 inch, 75 inch and 85 inch right now we're looking at this 75 inch you can see it's a bit bigger than the uh, last one we reviewed and uh you know i think that definitely 75 is the way to go if you're in a large room now obviously if you can afford the bigger one go for the bigger one but they do tend to get pretty expensive as the bigger you go so uh 75 tends to be that happy medium where you're not paying way too much but you're also not getting too small of a tv now with this particular tv you are going to get samsung's direct full array backlighting which is going to give you the best kind of color you can get out of QLED almost as good as the Q90 but um, not not quite because the Q90 just has more dimmable zones however this is definitely going to be noticeable when you put it against the Q70 Q60 and all the lower TVs so uh, you know if you're going for quality this is definitely kind of what you should be looking at now as expected with a lot of the higher end Samsung's this does have 4k AI upscaling. If you don't know what AI upscaling is, essentially, it well, it stands for artificial intelligence upscaling. But basically, what it does is it can take a smaller image and kind of predict the pixels that would be missing if you were to scale it up. Uh, and so, basically, you're going to be getting much better picture within your 1080p images, even maybe 720 images. Um, you know, if you go too low, it's obviously not going to look good on any TV. But this can definitely help kind of boost the quality of maybe your non-updated content 1080p on, you know, all your streaming devices. As expected, it also has your QLED ambient mode from Samsung. Um, they like to push this as a cool uh, feature, which can kind of blend into your wall, I guess. I'm not really sure how it works, but it's pretty cool. And uh, it's a good thing to throw up if you have people over and you don't necessarily watch TV. Now, this is a smart TV, so as you know, it should be capable, and it is, with all your smart devices, such as your Google Home or your Amazon Alexa, and uh, it even has IP programming, so you could do stuff with Control 4. Now, this TV does claim to have FreeSync, which is going to be great for you AMD gamers. Uh, personally, if you're going to be gaming on a TV, you probably won't be using your PC. Um, you know, people out there might want to, but this is for a very small amount of people. So I would just say, hey, this is QLED. It's going to look great with any console you pair it with. Um, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about the gaming features because most people that game super hardcore will probably use a monitor or something smaller. So as far as gaming goes, is if you use a console, this thing is going to be great. If you use a PC, you know, it's still going to look great, but it's at the end of the day, it's still a TV. Now, the viewing angle on this TV is quite great, and you tend to see that typically with your higher-end TVs, the viewing angle tends to get better just because you do have more lighting and more control of kind of how you view your picture. Now, one thing I also want to mention is the stand on this thing is a beast. Very, very heavy stand, and not to mention the TV is heavy itself. That's because it is a fully backlit panel. Um, you know, I, I was kind of shocked at how heavy the stand was, but given how heavy the TV is, it's nice to know that they didn't cheap out and go with some crazy plastic stuff. They have a nice, you know, metal, I think it's like lead or something because it's really heavy. Got a nice metal stand and you know your TV is going to be safe. Now, one of the more underappreciated things I feel like when I was looking at this TV unboxing it is the fact that all of your ports are ported into the back of the TV, I guess in the direction that would be easy to use. I, I don't know how to explain that. I'll, I'll show a picture right here. Uh, on the, some of the lower models, they had ports where you had to kind of turn around and plug it in from the right side. You had to like go around and it's kind of hard to see. So I thought that was a nice feature. And while we're on the topic of ports, let's just go through what we got. So you're going to get four HDMI connections an HDMI 2.1 for all you video file guys out there. It does have eARC, you have two USB connections, your LAN port for ethernet, and as always, the optical audio port, and that's gonna be for your sound bars, or maybe you're hooking up your receiver or something, and you wanna do you know, extra sound. It's always good to have that. Most TVs have them, but you know, in case you're wondering, you do have it. Now, one thing I really appreciate about Samsung's line this year is it's different than last year's in the sense that you have way more options. They're giving you more TV sizes. We're not used to seeing 50 inch or 70 inch. And, you know, they have all the models in those sizes as well. I just think it's kind of cool that instead of just focusing on mass producing one type of TV, they've gone and, you know, done it 
the same TV in multiple sizes, and then they've done a different TV in multiple sizes, which might sound normal, but this, to me, has been the most amount of sizes that they have included, and uh, I thought I just thought that was really cool. Now, last, but definitely not least, we're going to take a look at our fancy remote. Now, I know what you're thinking, remote? Why does a remote matter? Well, I'll tell you why it matters. This remote does not need batteries. Instead of using batteries, there's actually two ways that you can go about charging your remote. One, the coolest in my opinion, is this solar cell piece right here that takes solar energy and turns it into energy, obviously, solar energy. So it's solar powered remote. Now, if you really don't have any sun or any way to solar charge it, which I'm sure you could find a way, it does have a USB type C on the bottom. And as we all know, USB type C is the faster charging solution. So it's awesome that they're you know, paying attention to the details in even the smallest things like a remote. And it also makes it lighter because you don't have those batteries in there. And as you would expect with most smart remotes, it does have some hot keys for your streaming apps. This one in particular has a Netflix Prime Video and Samsung TV Plus, along with some other buttons. As you can see, you got your voice command button there too. And really simple remote. I love that they're not doing the keypads, only in the sense that the keypads can make things a little bit more complicated and uh, they've really simplified their remotes in the last few years. Now this does have Dolby Digital Plus and Quantum HDR 12X Cubed, which is just a fancy way of saying, hey, look at me, I can be bright, I can have a lot of colors, and I beat all of my younger brothers and sisters. And if you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, let me know what did you think of this video. And be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We're almost 2,000 subscribers. It's our next goal, so please help us get there. Thanks for watching and visit waltz.com before your next purchase of electronics and ask for a custom YouTube coupon code. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And if you have any questions, leave them below.